Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. A couple weeks ago, I did a Photoshop video demonstrating how to get a low-key art look. I took this image of the orangutan and I demonstrated how you could use Photoshop to give it a look such as this. In that video, I mentioned that you could do this with human portraiture as well and that I would do that in a future video. That's what we're going to be doing today. Now what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be doing things a little bit differently than I did in this previous video. Not because I have to, but because I want to show you different Photoshop techniques. The more Photoshop techniques you can learn, the better off you'll be in the long run. So between these two videos, you should learn quite a bit about Photoshop. In the description below this video, I have a link to this other video I did in case you haven't seen it. Now, of course, when you're doing low-key photography, it's best to probably capture it in camera. If you Google low-key photography, you'll see dozens of examples of low-key photography. But if you're bored and you want to play around in Photoshop, you could do it there as well. We're going to work on this image. Now, this is a free Adobe stock image. Those of you that watch my videos may remember that recently I did a video demonstrating how if you subscribe to the Creative Cloud, you have access to hundreds, if not thousands, of free Adobe stock images. In the description below this video, I'll have a link to that video as well because you could download this image. In the description below this video, I'll have the image ID so that if you are a Creative Cloud subscriber, you could get this image for free. You don't have to register. You don't have to subscribe to Adobe Stock or anything like that. You just need a Creative Cloud subscription and you could immediately download this image and you could work along at home. Now, let's get started. Now, I mentioned I'm going to do things a little bit different, but the first step is the same. You need to make the image dark. In the previous video, I used levels, but I mentioned there's all different ways you can you make the image dark. I'm going to show you a different way. Many people don't like levels. They prefer curves. Now, I'm going to use a curves adjustment layer. If your Photoshop doesn't look like mine, go over in the top right hand corner and click this little drop down and you'll notice I'm in the photography workspace. If you'd like your Photoshop to look like my Photoshop so you could more easily follow along, change to the photography workspace. Then go to the adjustments and then click on the little curves adjustment layer. Now to make the image dark using curves, simply go to the top right hand uh, edge of the curve and pull it straight down. Now don't sweat it. Don't worry that you're making it too dark. Don't worry that you're making it not dark enough because we're going to come in and fine tune this in a moment. So just make it dark. All right. When you're done, you can just click this little arrow to the right and you've done it. Now, in that previous video, I did a step here where I was prepping it for light rays. You know, remember on that orangutan, we had some light rays coming in, hitting his face and hands. We don't have to worry about that here because I'm not going to have light rays hitting the model. Instead, I'm just going to have it a low-key look with light hitting her face, naturally. So, what we're going to do is now we're going to uh, put a stamp layer on top of these two layers. To do that, on a Mac, there's a keyboard shortcut, Shift, Option, Command, E. On a PC, it's Shift, Alt, Control, E. Once you do that, you'll have that stamp layer there. Next, we need to make that layer a smart object. To do that, go up to Filter, down to Convert for smart filters and you'll see you have a little square in the corner there that layer is now a smart object now the smart filter we're going to use is the camera raw filter so we're going to go up to filter and then down to camera raw filter now here we're going to affect tone a little bit more remember i mentioned you didn't have to worry about when using curves making it too dark or not dark enough this is where we could fine tune it i'm going to add a lot more contrast I'm going to make the highlights quite a bit brighter. I'm going to bring the shadows way down. I'm going to open up those whites quite a bit, but I'm going to bring down those blacks a bit as well. All right, now it's pretty low key as it is. One thing about when you're shooting dark images, the color usually isn't as saturated. Also, you may have noticed when I Googled, you know, low key photography, uh, many of those images were black and white. A lot of photographers prefer black and white for low key photography. If you do, just click on the little B&W button right here and make it black and white at this point. I'm going to keep it color, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to desaturate it by taking saturation down quite a bit. So something more like that. 
OK? And I think that looks pretty good. We're going to click OK. OK, that's a low-key image as it is, but I'm going to finesse it a little more. I really want the emphasis to be on her face and not so much on the window. Now, there's all different things I could do and different things I could try. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a linear gradient. Now, you remember, you may remember in the other video, we used a color gradient at the end of that video. A linear gradient is totally different. It has nothing to do with color gradients. What, to get that linear gradient, first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to add a blank layer on top. So up here, just click on this little uh, new layer icon. So we have that black blank layer there. Then to get the linear gradient, hit the G key on your keyboard and you'll get this gradient tool. Make sure that you're using the white to black transition. The very first box is the linear gradient. The mode is normal, opacity 100%. Do not click on reverse. Dither's okay, transparency doesn't matter, and the method perceptual is fine. I'm going to shrink this down a little bit so that I could draw my gradient. To do that on my Mac, I'm hitting Command mi minus a couple, three times. It's Control minus on a PC. Now I want to draw a perfectly horizontal gradient. So to make sure that it's perfectly horizontal, I'm going to hold the Shift key down while I draw it. And then I'm just going to draw like this. And you'll notice when I do that, it covers up the image. Now what we're going to do is we're going to change the blend mode to overlay. All right, so there's before and there's after. So you can see how we're changing the emphasis on our model. Now I want to draw one in the other direction as well. So I'm going to put down another new layer by clicking on that new layer icon at the bottom. Again, I'm going to go from this time left to right, but perfectly horizontal, holding that shift key and go something like that. See what that looks like. Then I'm going to change the blend mode to overlay. Now I didn't like that one. It didn't seem to get enough of that background. So I'm going to hold that shift key in again and just redraw that one a little further. Draw a little further. Okay, now we're getting started. All right, now I'm going to put these two gradients, these linear gradients I just did, I'm going to put them in their own folder. So I'm going to hold the shift key in and click on the one below it so they're both active. I'm going to put them both in their own folder. I'm going to hit the uh, fit the image to screen by hitting Command-0 on my Mac. It's Control-0 on the PC. So I could show you the before, after. You see how we shift the emphasis from kind of the right side of the image to the model's face? Um, kind of like that. I think that worked out well. Now, um, this next part, I guess, maybe is optional, uh, but I kind of, I kind of want the window to be just a little bit darker than our model. Now, to do that, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to put another stamp layer on the very top. So again, on my Mac, I'm hitting, hitting Shift Option Command. E on a PC that shift alt control E. Now what I want to do is I need to put a layer underneath this layer. Now I could just add a new layer and then drag it, but another way, an easier way to do it, and to me it's easier, hold the command key on a Mac, control key on a PC, hit that new layer icon and it will put the layer below. Now we're going to fill this layer with black. To do that, we're going to go up to edit, down to fill, and then we're going to change the contents to black. So we're filling it with black. And you can see there's black there now, but we don't see anything because our actual image layer is covering it up. So we're going to click on that, make it active. We're going to add a layer mask to this. So we're going to click on the little mask icon. So we added the layer mask. Now we're going to get a brush. Hit the B key on your keyboard for the brush. Make sure you have the default black and white. You should. If you're clicked on the mask, it should be black and white. What we're going to do, though, is we're going to lower the opacity way down, like to 10% around, give or take, 12% is good. Now what I'm going to do is get a really big brush. And I just want to remember now, this is cumulative. So every time I brush stroke through, it's going to add 10% more to our, um, our brush stroke. And what we're doing is we're painting in black on the white mask. And what it will allow, it will allow the black layer below it to come through. So it will make the window darker. Hopefully you can see that in the video. It's very subtle. I also want to make her 
her uh, top darker as well. Maybe her neck even a little darker. So you can see every time I brush on this, it's making it dark. Make it darker over there, darker there. So just a little darker. Now there's, I'll give you like a, like, um, there's before and there's after. Before, after. So we're putting that emphasis a little bit more on her face. Get a bigger brush, hit that right bracket key. Just a little more. All right. I think that is a little bit more to my taste. Now I really want to uh, fine tune the color and a little bit more with her face on the brightness of her face and so on. Now, remember on the previous video, I did a color gradient. Um, those color gradients are pretty strong, aren't they? I'm gonna show you a more subtle way to color grade the image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get another stamp layer on top, Shift Option Command E, Shift Alt Control E to get that stamp layer on top. We're going to convert this to a smart object. We're going to go up to Filter, Convert for Smart Filters. Now it did that. Now we're going to get that Camera Raw filter again. Filter, Camera Raw filter. Now here I want to make the whites just a little whiter. Yeah, just bring up that brightness on her face just a little bit more. Maybe I could even make those darks just a little darker. All right, now. I need to color grade this and I could do this within color or within uh, camera raw with the color grading tab. To do that, there's all different ways, uh, different colors you could add. I'm just going to go to the standard kind of blue, yellow or blue, orange. So I'm going to make shadows blue. So I'm going to pull this more towards blue. Not that much, but a little bit, just a little bit blue. And then at the highlights, I want them somewhere between like uh, orange and yellow. Maybe like that. You could do the same for the midtones as well if you want. I don't want to, so I'm just going to double click it, double click on it like that. Then you could change kind of the, uh, the blend of it with this slider below, kind of the areas it's actually affecting, like that. And the blending here as well, that won't affect as much. But let me see a before after on this. This is before. After I wanted it subtle, yeah, that, that's not bad. So that's another way you could go about color grading your image. If you don't like to use those color that color grading I did on the orangutan, which I you know was very very strong, it's another subtle way to get away with it. So there it is. Now let's do a before after. Uh, to do that, I'm going to hold the Option key in and click on the background layer's eyeball, and there's a before, and there's after. Or after. Now you could crop it. Maybe you think that there's a little bit too much like uh, dead space over here on the right hand side. So I can get the crop tool, hit the C key on your keyboard, or click over here, change the ratio maybe to four by five. I don't want it vertical, so I'll click right here and make it horizontal. And then I could uh, uh, that. Something like that might be, might tighten up, tighten it up a little bit and make it look a little bit a little better. I'm getting these weird kind of blank lines here because I screwed up on my crop, excuse me. There. Bring it in there and see what that looks like. And I still got those blank pixels because I'm totally screwing up. It's hard to do this and talk at the same time. I know you're probably watching thinking you could do this. You probably could, but it's hard for me. All right, let's just go with that. See if we got rid of it. I still got those crazy lines. But anyway, hopefully you get the idea. Let me minus it out, zero it out. There we go. All right, there is my low key look. I went from that to that. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.